All right. So I'll go ahead and get started here. Um, and I'm Brian Besco from Twisted Sage Studios. We're just actually down the road, about 45 miles. Um, we create the Tensor Rings, which is why I'm here to talk to you today um, about this technology. Because this technology has uh, a lot of applications in radionics. Um, if I've been speaking here three or four years now, and um, I finally took the course with Ed Kelly here, and I am absolutely blown away by radionics um, and how they work with this rings, because our rings and how they synergize together, it is really amazing stuff. So um, to begin with, I'll just give a little bit of background on what the tensor rings are and the tensor ring technologies. Um, the tensor rings are based on sacred measures. They're very specific measurements that come from places like the different pyramids, um, sacred sites around the world. Um, the tensor fields in the lab, they make water lighter in weight in the lab. They bring water to its original crystalline structure, which I work with some gals who wrote Dancing with Water, the new science of water. And in their second edition of that book, they're showing that the tensor fields do bring water to its original crystalline structure. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Philip Callahan. Um, Philip Callahan did studies on the tensor rings as well. And this is a quote from him. Uh, tensor rings exhibit a paramagnetic value many times greater than anything ever tested. This means the tensor rings cause some of the elements in water to spin to their high spin rate referred to as ORM which is orbitally rearranged monatomic elements. Um, so it's basically cre creating ormus out of your water. Uh, so the, the tensor rings do something similar with electromagnetics. Now we did some uh, biofeedback studies because as far as scientific instruments that can pick up the tensor rings, there's only one thing out there that we've seen that is gaseous discharge visualization, GDV photoimaging. We've seen that you can take a GDV of a magnet and see the magnetic lines. You can put a tensor ring around that magnet and it negates the magnetic lines within that ring. So that proves that it is a room temperature superconductor. Um, I spoke at the Tesla Technology Convention on that a few years ago. But we did the biofeedback studies with our cell phone rings. Now, what these guys are doing is they are drawing in all that harmful energy and they're transmuting it. They're changing it into something beneficial. So the biofeedback studies did exactly what we saw was occurring, was that it, uh, it aligns your chakras, it makes your organs function better uh, when you use a ring on your phone than if you had no phone or no ring at all. So it's pretty amazing stuff to repurpose that energy. Um, let's see, in dowsers, professional dowsers have been using the tensor rings since their inception. Um, the tensor rings where they work with electromagnetics, they work also with geomagnetics, so geopathic stress lines, um, EMFs, uh, portal vortexes, all those kind of things are cleared with the tensor fields. Now there was, um, oh gosh, who was it? The plant geneticist, um, Dr. Langerman, I believe in the 40s, he created that geometry called the Genesa crystal. We've taken these tensor rings and we put them into this structure, and this has a sphere of influence of five and a half miles that it restructures all those electromagnetics. This is what I've always used as my radionics machine right here because it broadcasts in that whole area. You can put your intentions into there. You can put a crystal in there, and it will take the consciousness of the crystal and it acts like a carrier wave for that in that whole area. Um, so let's see the, the tensor technology. Like I say, a lot, of these, a lot of these tensor rings were created from very specific measurements. We cut everything to the hundred thousandths of a millimeter in our studio. Now these specific measurements, a lot of them, like I say, do come from the pyramids. This is an ancient technology. It was rediscovered in the early 90s by a gentleman actually here from South Dakota, Slim Sperling. He passed away in 2007 and um, he came to me probably uh, seven years ago uh, after, the, after he passed and brought the information to me on how to make these rings. And I was pretty mundane at the time. It was actually the gals who wrote Dancing with Water who said, well, he, 
you know, he just kind of sits on our front porch step at night and, uh, you know, gives us information. He has the information for you on how to put together these rings. So that's, that's where I began on the scientific side of things. Um, so I was always trying to prove everything scientifically, but the thing is, is that you cannot fit these into any box of science. Um, this stuff is way farther out there. So one of the cubit measures, though, was actually uh, discovered in late 2012 by a couple of our friends here in this room. Um, Marty Lucas and Scott Ertl brought in the galactic cubit, and it was kind of synchronistic because somebody that they were at a gathering with called me up and said, hey, there's this measurement. You've got to try it. These guys were there, and they were having fun with it, you know, and so I was like, okay. So I made it, and um, that was where... When that galactic cubit came in, that was where we were seeing that was more than just a science-based tool. Because with that ring, when you hold on to that ring, it is seen that it draws, it anchors in other soul aspects, so other parts of us. Because these rings operate through many layers, just like we, as a multidimensional being, are found on all these layers. And that's why these rings work so well for people is because they are found on every single layer that we are. Um, so we've, we've came up with a lot of other cubit measures. Some of them have been doused in. Most of the ones that we use anymore are the standard Teotihuacan unit. It comes from um, megalithic structures um, all over the world are built with this specific measurement. Uh, so that's kind of our basic one. We've, um, so like at Twisted Sage Studios, the the rings that we create there that we put into the harmony rings everything is so far beyond intention i mean intention is the basis of everything as we know in radionics but these things exist in a higher plane than intention they exist as etheric templates which these etheric templates are something that um, some of the best energy tools in the world that are out there are created here and they're anchored into the physical and so that's what we're doing with these tensor rings, is they have physical measurements, these sacred measurements, that we can anchor in all that into the physical. Um, and we could talk about that templates for a while, but I'll skip all that just because it's uh, long-winded and could be a little confusing. Um, but with these templates, last year here at the Radionics Convention, actually, I was trying to make a set of rings that um, we were using the standard Teotihuacan unit because it fits around the wells. And so I was, you know, back in the studio during the convention. I was like, okay, i got to make this ring. So I know a couple of really phenomenal radionics people here in this room, and I'm going to ask them to step in on the soul level and drop in their knowledge and information into these etheric templates so we have a new ring. Well, one of those people was our good friend Marty, and he dropped something into these rings that totally changed them to where you could create a second field with two rings where you could not before. And within that field, we are seeing that that is reviving telomeres, the end caps of the DNA, if it is within your belief system and if it is within the highest and greatest good. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's something that he works on on a soul level. So I appreciate that uh, he was able to step in and do that. So we called them the torsion rings because they created that extra field. We've actually since anchored that into the balance and harmony. So the balance and harmony rings contain everything. Um, they contain the frequencies and properties of the crystal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and the mineral kingdom. Those are all ushered into this ring. It is also within these rings are the higher aspects of the earth elementals like fire, water, um, my sister, who she channels an energy group called the Elders Three, um, Thoth is her buddy. He just hangs out. He's one of the Ascended Masters. Metatron's like her right hand. Um, she channeled in these symbols for all the Earth Elementals, which you'll see in our catalogs. Please do grab a catalog if you don't have one back there. Um, so Hedica, that symbol of the Water Elemental, that spiritual aspect of water is found in these as well. So not only do these work with water and making it lighter in weight in the lab, it is also connecting to that spiritual aspect of the water. So that's why these are so significant when working with water. 
Um, so let's see. The, the other thing that these guys are doing is they are dropping you into the sacred space of the heart. And that's something that I would really love to share with you guys because um, taking this beginning class where I saw a lot of people having issues with their stick. Um, and then I see a lot of dowsers out there too that are professional dowsers that still have the influence of the ego. So the sacred space of the heart, there's actually brain cells within the heart. And that is where our consciousness resided before, um, before it got knocked out of us. You know, it was there at birth and as a little kid. And at some time, our consciousness moves right up into our brain. And it sits right there behind the pineal gland. It looks out the world through our eyes, sees everything separate in a duality. We can simply drop into that sacred space of the heart, and then our ego doesn't have that influence. So if we go into the sacred space of the heart before we check for our sticks or before we douse or before we answer questions, um, we don't have that influence. And so it's a very simple, simple, easy thing. Um, and I'd love to just walk you guys through it. Uh, you know, I imagine a lot of you guys don't meditate, but if you do, um, this will seem too easy. If you don't meditate, this will still seem too easy. It's just three breaths. So you just close your eyes, or you can have your eyes open if you're more comfortable. Within your physical heart, you'll find your light, your spark. We're going to take that light, and we're just going to visualize, imagine that light of yours going straight down into the earth, deep down into the earth. And it hits the crystal sun within the earth, that spirit of Gaia, of our mother earth. And that light shines straight back up. And we shine that straight up to source, creator, God, central sun, whatever you call that higher power. And we breathe that back down. And as we become that column of light, we are grounded, we are connected, and we're right there in the heart. Now isn't that simple and easy? And then you can open your eyes, and you can be in this world, but here at the same time. I don't know if any of you guys noticed that, but I mean, the whole room feels different to me, because everything is just mellow. There's not all the thoughts going on and everything else. So I hope you can notice that within yourself. Um, simple, easy process, and then do your dowsing, and you get much better answers um, without that influence. So, all right, using rings with radionics. So, like I said, I'm super excited about radionics now that I have a clue what's actually going on here. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been pretty amazing because to me, radionics always felt, you know, there was something about it that felt a little, you know, kind of jolty, electric-like. Um, and I noticed for myself when I put a big ring over my equipment, it just smoothed everything out. I mean, everything just felt good. Um, you can use the rings for yourself because, again, it helps you get into the heart space. Um, these rings, where they connect to all that you are, they are doing some pretty major clearing. I mean, these things will clear cords, entities, soul contracts. Um, let's see, clearing past life issues and how those past life issues affect us in the here and now. Because what all is put into these energetic templates, a lot of you folks have probably been through our ascension chamber. It's the 13-foot tall tower that has 13 of these rings that come down over you. You stand in the geometries. It creates a tube torus 300 miles wide. And as you stand within that epicenter, it drops you automatically in the heart space. It connects you to all that you are, and it does the clearing work. Um, the soul contracts, everything. And that's all done by the higher soul self because where this stuff drops you into the heart and connects you to all that you are they never violate free will so when you have a tensor field generator if it is in the highest and best good for somebody to be zapped by emfs or whatever the case is this is working on that level to where it does not violate the free will of the human so that is a beautiful thing about this technology and i'll talk about that some more um, you know, when Slim Sperling rediscovered this stuff in the early 90s, the military came along, and they could not, where this produces a column of light that goes for miles off both sides, 
the military could not use this to send thought projections or anything out through there because it only works in the highest and best good. So the military dropped their interest in it because um, it could not be weaponized. Um, so for doing the clearing work, it's huge um, using these rings for, for your own self. And I know I, you know, Ed Kelly talked about how the machines used to have crystals in them and they stepped away from that because you couldn't clear the crystals. Well, I would love to buy one of those machines if there's still any out there available with the crystals because you drop one of these rings around and it clears your crystals. It'll clear your machines. Um, so that can clear your machines of negative influence. Um, okay, so some of the more tangible uses of the rings. You can put them around your input and your output. So on your input, um, there was a really phenomenal radionics person here, and I'm not going to mention names, but when he checked, he saw that it was a minimum of, of 100% um, amplification of your input and your output. And he said that it could even go up to 10,000% given the circumstances and the operator. Um, when we were broadcasting, well, we were checking to see broadcasting to a virus where it was going to be 20 minutes to broadcast for a virus to clear that, to bring that into balance, it took it down to 20 seconds. So, I mean, your broadcast time with a single ring is significantly shorter. And just from when I was playing here in the class, that's what I found out as well, is that it took my broadcast time from minutes just down to seconds um, for just one of these little rings. So, um, and I know that uh, a lot of the folks who've been doing this for a while talk about using these larger rings for the virtual ground. Now, I don't understand exactly what the virtual ground is, but I'm sure a lot of you guys do. So that is what you can use this around your unit for that virtual grounding. Um, and then, of course, you can use it around the potentizer well, because if you are creating any form of, well, we talk about using these harmony rings to create elixirs with your water. You speak through the water, or you speak through the ring to the water, and you can just voice what it is that you would like the water to carry, you know, whether it's the frequency of bergamot or whatever, and then you put that over the water, it's going to be working with the consciousness of the water and the consciousness of that specific plant that you asked for and bring that through into the water. And again, using the radionics, that just amplifies all that. Um, and that's really what I really love about the radionics is that amplification of, of what these guys are doing. Um, so anyway, it's... Um, a lot more than what the Slim Spurling rings were doing. I mean, I know a lot of people probably have the old Slim Spurling rings on their wells, and Slim was a very phenomenal being. He was working with two specific frequencies. They were measurable with an oscilloscope. After the galactic cubit came along, it's like you could not measure a standing frequency within there anymore because it carries whatever it is that's needed at the time. So no matter who holds on to this, it's going to be bringing through something different for the person. And that's what I really want to stress about using this with radionics or people with organite even. So people who make organite, if they have organite that's non-beneficial, you put a ring over it and it makes it beneficial. So if you are broadcasting, it is going to be working with the higher aspect of the plant, the whatever animal that you are working with. It is going to be working with that higher aspect of them. And it's only going to bring through whatever it is that they need. You know, so for like me, for my own healing work, it's like I have a pretty limited knowledge, but when I am working with that higher part of me, it has, you know, it, it knows. It knows what I need. Um, so anyway, I had geared this for being a 30-minute uh, talk here, so I'll just take some questions here for a little bit. And um, Yes, sir. You do not have to clear the rings at all once they're sealed up. So that's another thing about the rings is they're created out of copper. So copper is actually a microcrystal. It contains uh, a piezoelectric flow of energy. When they draw the wire in the manufacturer, it aligns all the crystalline structure. So it creates one-way flow of energy. So we fold that wire in half, we twist it, and then we bring the ends back together 
So it's creating this counter-rotating vortex in both directions. Once that's sealed up, it never needs cleaned or cleared. It will hold that infinitely. Um, and then because they are connected again to those etheric templates, those etheric templates are very well guided, guarded, protected. Um, so nothing can taint that to get into here. And that's the beautiful thing too, is that if you have a harmony ring and we do the updates on the etheric templates, that goes into every one of the rings that are out there, no matter when it is made. So it's like you always receive the upgrades. So, yes, sir, in the back. Yes, yes, it does, it does change the, the light, the, the frequencies of the light, because it does harmonize all frequencies. And so we were actually trying to make a light bulb ring uh, for, for Marty one time, and, uh, you know, it was all my intention of creating this etheric template to make this light bulb ring. Well, usually when the human comes through and tries to make something, you know, there's a different plan there. So that's where we created the fire ring. So I have a bigger hoop back there. That's the fire ring, and the reason it was called the fire ring, it does bring through that elemental of fire, but it's also bringing through the soul's fire, the crystal sun, and the central sun. It is the only ring that we cannot put into the balance and harmony because it is too much. So the balance and harmony contains everything but that fire ring. Um, but they still work great on your light bulbs, the fire rings do. So, yes, sir. So Slim Sperling used to um, actually electroplate them. He'd electroplate them silver, gold, silver, gold. And they talked about how that made the flow differently and it feels differently. Now, we were making them out of solid silver for a little while. But when you, we were using that silver, you know, all the guides said, well, it's just pretty to the eyes. You know, it really didn't contain anything. But then once we started learning to work with the higher aspect that spiritual aspect, we then worked with the spiritual aspect of silver. We brought that into the physical as we were making them. And now then, the silver do carry the tensor fields. Um, but they're just still not as strong as the copper because of that crystalline structure. So it's that crystalline structure, that piezoelectric. To me, that's my belief on why copper is used um, because it uh, creates that, that flow. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I see that, uh, you know, some people use it to put their water on it, or mm -hmm. I'm particularly interested in maybe when we get herbs or raw materials into our lab to maybe purify them or cleanse them, or how would I know if that is needed, or if so, how long to leave it in there? Sure, and as far as um, using this to clear and energize things, um, Krishna, who is the gentleman who brought in gases discharge visualization into the United States. Um, Krishna, he has worked with, um, you know, water and doing this with like Dr. Emoto. The, we had a gal in Costa Rica who has a coconut oil manufacturing plant. They use three of these rings in line with their coconut oil. Krishna did the GDV photo imaging for them and he said that it completely went off of his charts for GDV. They could not find it anymore. And so for oils, it supercharges oils. Um, as far as how long, you know, for like water, if you just have regular tap water, you can really tell the difference because of, you know, the regular tap water is just lower in energetics. So when you put this with regular tap water, you can feel and taste a difference overnight within eight hours. But we're also seeing with GDV that within 10 minutes, it makes a difference. Um, so that's just something that... And that's something that I would imagine would be individual for each thing. Um, yep, yep, you would just douse for that. Yep. Um, 
Yes, sir. So it, it actually can affect the water instantly, but the longer you leave it, that longer exposure time, you know, the more effect you're going to get out of that. Because we've seen that you can take highly acidic water and you can change it to a neutral pH to slightly alkaline. But that is the course of 48 hours that it takes for that acidic water to get to that point. Um, so as far as just passing the water through, you know, it does do something slight to the water, but my suggestion is to bury one under these tanks because it only takes the small column of light that goes into your water to affect a whole larger mass of water because water has consciousness and it just spreads throughout the water. So, yes, sir. Oh, sure. And... So most of the science that has been measured that I'm quoting comes from the new science of water, Dancing with Water. And so that book right now is discontinued. They're coming out with the, the second edition here um, at the beginning of the new year. And that's where they're actually showing the evidence of these bringing water to its original crystalline structure. So um, I know that uh, I have probably like four copies left at home of that book. It is. Yes, sir. Um, so Slim Sperling used to use the silver solder to bond these. I use um, bronze. Bronze is what I use. Um, you know, to me, it bronze feels cleaner. Silver, it's not as as tough. So, to me, using bronze like on these big rings, they're nearly indestructible. And it, you know, to us, it doesn't seem to slow down the energy flow through there whatsoever. So. Yes, ma'am. I have not. I've actually, um, I've done a few tests here and there with some of the local labs being a water operator, um, but I have not, I have not considered that one. So, and, and that's something too, maybe to check in with Dancing with Water to see if uh, perhaps they have. And those folks, MJ and Melanie, are really great to talk to. You can always call up MJ at any time and she's always happy to talk water and tensor rings. So, all right, anybody else have questions? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So as far as the size of the rings, um, we're really not seeing any difference in the potency between these two. Um, the gauge has a little bit that you can feel in the physical, so the gauge does feel more potent on the physical. But on the energetic level, we're seeing that it is exactly the same. But as far as um, the diameter, this one just creates a larger column than this one. So if they were the same gauge, they would be the same potency on the physical and the energetic, but just a different size column of light. Yes, yes, because, um, you know, we're seeing that copper, it's we're seeing that it's not beneficial to just leave it sitting in the tanks. I mean, you just leave it sitting in a fish tank or in a stock tank or in our own drinking water, and we can actually absorb too much copper through ingestion. Where when you wear it on the physical body, the skin is a very smart organ and will only absorb as much as, as needed. But um, so yes, these rings, that energy will go right through, it goes through the earth, I mean it goes through the metal on the tank. So you don't have to worry about that being impeded whatsoever. So, you know, I would even suggest even trying one of these little rings like this and slipping underneath of a, a larger water tank and just seeing what changes that can occur. So. Uh, I do have a few items back there. I have a couple of larger tensor field generators 
which are the Genesa crystals. Um, and if you folks find anything in the catalog that I don't have here, you're welcome to get a hold of me. Tonight I'm going to go home and stay up all night and make a few tools for some orders, so um, we can certainly see what we can do to accommodate anybody. So, And um, otherwise, we have several online stores in our catalog there. So, Yes, ma'am. So I'm actually not going to bring up the, the large ascension chamber just because um, this is about the only room that we could house it in. Um, and so we're 45 miles, well, 45 minutes. We're about 40 miles south of here. So if anybody would like to come down, it's free of charge to spend the, the five-minute session within that ascension chamber. Um, it really is a huge thing. I mean, for me... Well, we have people that fly and drive from all over the world that come to spend their five minutes in that thing, and we, you know, we don't charge anybody anything. You know, there's a lot of claims out there on what people notice with that, but the, you know, in the smallest, it is more of a positive state of mind and just a, a peace of mind after that. But for me, I attribute it to my rotator cuffs. Um, a lot of people claim that it clears their urges for for nicotine um, a lot of people claims that clears their cancer you know but then again we see cancer as usually beginning in the emotional field and where these tools work on all bodies we see that so if you have something out here in the emotional field and we see the physical as the last thing manifesting so all that stuff manifests into the physical so when we clear all this stuff out here then the physical comes back into balance and harmony. So that's why we see that these rings are so powerful is because we're working on everything, everything energetic as the human. Yes, ma'am. Doesn't make a difference. No. So you can actually, you know, if you can take your, your pipe apart and you can get these rings on your pipe, you can certainly do that. Um, for dancing with water, we make water wands, which are just a, a, a straight line cubit that's twisted. So it's still like a tensor ring, but instead of a column of light, it looks more like a caterpillar of energy. And you can wrap those around your pipe. Again, um, you know, I like the idea of leaving it on a holding tank, you know, um, and then Two, the nice thing about these is you put them over your hot water heater and, you know, it takes that calcium, magnesium, all that stuff, and since it brings water to its original crystalline structure, everything just falls off easier. Um, and there's an article that we wrote for the Tesla Technology Convention that we have a lot of this stuff, um, you know, footnoted in there, like uh, Philip Callahan's work on this. Um, there's a lot of other science that has been done with these rings. But like I say, I've totally stepped out of the science and into the woo-woo because, um, you know, that's where we see the miracles take place. And miracles just do not fall within science, you know. And so um, it's all experiential to me. Um, so anyway, yes, sir. So what it's doing is where it's bringing water to its original crystalline structure, it's just allowing a lot of that um, calcium, magnesium, all that to, to not stick together, to not clump together so that it dissipates out easier. So like when I put them on my hot water heater where we have hard water where I live, you know, I haven't cleaned out my hot water heater in like five years where before, you know, it would be like every two years that you would clean it out. So... Um, you know, that's that's just what we've seen with it. And again, as far as the, the that part goes, that would be another good question to ans ask uh, Dancing with Water because um, they have, you know, that book is really a phenomenal book that it goes more in depth uh, and, and they talk more on a science level where I'm just not able to get to that science level with it, so...
Well, and that's it, is that you're still going to have all the physical components. Um, the biggest thing about the rings is that they are changing everything energetically. They'll change some things on the physical as in, you know, restructuring water, but you're still not going to be able to, you know, clear out, you know, radiation, things like that. All that is physically still going to be within the water. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who claim that it clears the fluoride out of the water. We've never actually seen that. We've seen that when you use your intention and a ring, that it lessens the effects of fluoride, but it doesn't like just totally knock fluoride out. You'll still be able to test for it. And that's with electromagnetics too, is because you're not, you'll still find with a tri-field meter, you'll still find that there's stuff coming out of your outlets, but it is just beneficial. And so the old Sperling rings, the 144 megahertz, you could put one of those on your fuse box and it creates a column of light and it will restructure electromagnetics within that column. But since we started working with these etheric templates, we work with the consciousness of electricity. We work with the earth consciousness and that is what comes through your electrical wiring and it creates a sacred space within the home. So that's how things are changed energetically is that we are working with consciousness. So everything that goes into these tools, there are a physical anchoring for everything that we know how to do and create here. So we've created, you know, like this ascension chamber. We created this and we just anchored it into here. Yes, sir. Yes, um, so the, the first tensor ring that Slim Sperling discovered, it was the 144 megahertz frequency. It was the, the sacred cubit or the royal cubit that came out of one of the six measures that came out of the Great Pyramids. And so you can actually drop an oscilloscope within the center of that ring and it has a measurable frequency. So within the book we do have the 144 and then um, Slim worked with uh, Hans Becker, an astrophysicist who discovered it mathematically, <clears throat> I think you guys understand what I'm saying, mathematically, uh, the 177 megahertz. Um, there was, and that was another measurable frequency. Um, there was a master dowser from Kansas City who came in and he doused in for us the 333 megahertz, the 188, and the 764. And then, of course, um, our, our, our wonderful gentleman here brought in the galactic qubit. Um, the other qubit that we work with is that standard Teotihuacan unit, and that's the balance and harmony rings. Um, so, yep, after those measurable frequencies, it got to be where we created those etheric templates that brought in the frequencies and properties of all this other stuff that is not stationary and not measurable. So, um, yeah, and so much of this is just experiential. So, I would, I, I would love for you guys to take some of these rings with you tonight um, back to your rooms to play with, to try out on your equipment. Um, the other day I broadcast myself with a balance and harmony ring and it was tangible. I could, I could feel it. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, and then, you know, because that's really the way, you know, to get the best feel out of this stuff is to actually through experiential. So I do encourage you. Yes, sir. <coughs> So the tensor rings and the smart meters. Um, so, you know, for, for what we've seen is that most smart meters are no more harmful than your old meters with a Wi-Fi added to it. Um, because your, your regular meters and your fuse panel, it's, you, you know, you don't want to be within six feet of that anyway because that is non-beneficial energy. Um, so the only testing that we've done is what we get from our own biofeedback and from our, you know, our asking. So like Slim Sperling, when uh, Slim was starting out with this stuff, what he would do is he would send all of his rings to all the psychics that he knew and dowsers, and he would ask for that feedback. And that's what I do too, is my sister is actually very instrumental, Brenda Schnoes with the Elders Three, She's very instrumental in bringing in a lot of these new templates, these new frequencies. And so she's the first one I go to to ask about this. So with that meter ring, we, um, we would just see that when you place that over the meter, we would actually see and feel that flowing through the entire house. 
and bringing through that frequency of unconditional love and just creating that sacred space. But we also saw that it would travel up line in the electrical, and so it would cover the whole neighborhood. Um, so, no, we don't have any science basis on that whatsoever. All we've done is gone through and send these out to people to test and experiment, and then we get that feedback, and then I compile it, and then I send that out because I feel that I... I mean, I certainly do not want to ever mislead anybody on what we feel is the reality that these are, you know, accomplishing. And the emails and phone calls that I get every day from people, you know, especially those that have EMF sensitivities and what they're reporting, I mean, that's, it's, it's huge. So it's, um, you know, to me, this is a blending of science and spirituality, and I feel that is going to be the biggest the biggest game changer on our planet is that blending of science and spirituality and that's what i feel radionics is a lot of because you're using your intention and you're also using something solid based right here and i think the blending of those two is what's really going to change everything on our planet so i hope i roundabout answered that okay and it looks like i'm getting uh, about ready to wrap up here so that's my favorite part about the rings, though, on especially if you're, you know, for me, for being a beginning radionics person, is that I feel that it takes out a lot of that, you know, guesswork that things are going to be for the highest and greatest good because things are going to be working for the highest and greatest good of your plants because if you have your plant in the well or your animal in the well, it is going to be working with that higher consciousness of that plant or of that animal. And that's what I feel is one of the biggest benefits of using these rings from my perspective and that perspective of consciousness. So, all right. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>